Okay, this is the, me. This is what I'm going to talk about. And of course, I represent nature and observations, for sure. <laughs> this is my institute, and that's something which tells you that I know what I'm talking about. Okay. Uh, just recently, the White House climate report was released, stating sea level will rise from between 20 centimeter and two meters by year 2100. Nonsense, my friends. <laughs> Quod erat demonstrandum, it means, uh, which I will demonstrate. Okay, this is sea level by 2100. These are the limits, physical limits. Things can change, but certainly not above one meter. It's hardly, hardly likely that is more than 60 centimeters, and the opposite in the downside. It is possible, and it's very probable here somewhere. And here is So you see, not very much different from today. So White House is here, right above where we can expect it. Isn't that remarkable? They were supposed to be clever people and based on, based on science. But they demonstrate something. They are above the possible physical limits of, change, of sea level changes. Can you do that? And even though they're likely, and it's a little part here, and they are more or less saved. OK, next one. Sea level in the future. And now I'm taking just in the near future, may change for three different variables. Changes in the water volume, what we call glacial eustacy. The ultimate, the ultimate frame, I mean, you cannot go a, a beat it, is 10 millimeter per year, because that was the maximum rise of sea level when we, at the end of the Ice Age, when they had enormous amount of glacier, which was melting at a very high rate. And, you hold, and it takes time for ice to melt. So if you consider those physical parameters, you cannot beat that. Thermal expansion, Sterica you said, it is about maybe five millimeter per year, but it's ups and downs. It's not in one direction. So it's, and very, very important at the coast. There is no water to expand, so it's zero, and it cannot ever change that. The redistribution of water masses is very, very important because that goes to the ocean circulation. You know, it redistributes the water, but the mean doesn't change. So that is the main variables. So now let us go into the picture. This is the open ocean, and the, this is the place which may, may be able to, susceptible to thermal expansion. But in the last, in the Argo, experiment is 0.01 millimeter. That's not very much. Okay? Then here at the shelf, it's lower water. And down at the coast, there is no water to expand. So if you have five centimeter here, it would be five millimeter there, and it would be zero there. Please remember that, because otherwise you upset the dynamics of, of the ocean. And we shouldn't do that if we are serious. Uh, here at the coast, that's where we have our tide gauges. We make our measurements. Most of those are in, were established in harbors. Harbors usually be in uh, entrances of big rivers, uh, deltas. So many of them are representing subsiding areas. Then some of them are sitting, huge colossus of harbor construction on compactable material. So you have a site-specific compaction. So just by that, it is an overrepresentation. And then, of course, you have to consider all those local factors. But remember this. It's, this is how it goes. So we go back to, to this place where we measure it in number two. That is the sea level or shore line or whatever you call it. It is controlled by an enormous amount of variables. And it is coastal dynamics, it's wind, currents, a lot of things. And it is land, uh, 
what happens with the land level or crustal level. If you are in Bangkok, they are subtracting water, and then you get an artificial subsidence, which is very, very large, and so on, and the sea level itself. So all of those, all those variables we have to control and look into. And as a geologist and a scientist, I have to do that before I say something. Open my mouth. OK, sorry. Uh, but there is a lot of people who say, Wittgenstein said, if you don't know what you're talking about, it's better to. But unfortunately, they are, they are um, continuing cackling. And those who are cackling are IPCC, is IPCC and their Boy Scouts. The Boy Scouts are even worse than the IPC, and of course, the White House report. Uh, okay, so there, are, there were 159 tide gauge stakes in NOAA's old data set. If you plot them like this, it's the, from uplift to subsidence. It's clear, this uh, uh, S-lines curve. Here somewhere, we should find the mean oceanic component. That's, that, that's obvious. And IPCC is there. Isn't that embarrassing? Just above it, way up into the subsidence region. How could that be? Terrible thing. So we go, then they improved it a little, so we got 204. It's very good cover all over. And if you take out the outliers, the, the Gaussian distribution is very nice, and the mean is 1.6 millimeter rise per year. But remember, that is a tide gauge station. And I always said there is an overrepresentation of, of subsidence and site specific compaction. I will show you Kattegat, where we are able, where we are able to know exactly the amount of crustal movement, so we can uh, get the real sea level effect. It's 0.9, 0.8, 0.9. And many, many important key sites, not least in Indian Ocean, show absolutely no. So somewhere here we have to be, not up there, not there, somewhere here, and that's good enough. Let us look a little at this. Uh, we have satellite altimetry. This is a map. It should be rising rapidly there and falling. But there is not a single place on the globe where the, the data fits with the map, which is interesting. You have Kiribati, this reckon, which is supposed to be rising. It's a straight line. The low here is, of course, the El Nino Enzo. So they are just small. And this is up on the other side. The Tuvalu in the short term and the long term. It's straight line. It's only in the uh, when they installed it with some compaction. So we see these things that it's not a good record. We go back to, I just shown the Kiribati and Tuvalu. There is zero here in the present. But the Indian Ocean, I worked very much there. We have the Maldives, Minicoy, we have uh, Goa, we have Bangladesh, and I will show you from those, and I will show Mumbai and the other tide gauge station on the other side. We show exactly the same values, so you can see the area is quite stable. Here in Perth, there, if you t take away the subsidence factor, you are left by no rise during the last 40, 50 years. So let us go into the station here. We have the Maldives, uh, Bangladesh, and Goa. Uh, th this is the sea level record during the last uh, 400 years. Uh, and you can first of all see the Maldives and Goa is, are almost identical. And they're completely different sets of information, but there's a lot of different information. It's not just one thing, it's just adding, adding, adding up different parameters, and you get this record. But if, now we were uh, interested in the last year. Here, the last 40 years, nothing has happened. Last 50 years, has nothing happened, and also. So it's a stability in the last 40, 50 years. And you cannot fiddle with that. That is what the field evidence, I mean, the morphology of the shores in great details and in small details. We have, for example, rock cat platform, 
20 cent. It was left overgrown now. And now we have an, the being in, in process of a new rock cat platform. And we can see the same goes here. And um, mm, if you go to the tide gauge station in Mumbai, Mumbai, stable, rising, falling, stable. It's not a rising. And some idiots put a straight line through it and say, the, the real thing is 0.7. That's the only thing it's not. There's nowhere and no time it has been 0.7 rise. So this is a very nice data set from the Indian Ocean. So my friends, no sea level rise here. Uh, and then we go, I go to my, I take a jump. I go to my home country. Here is the uplift cone, 800 meters in the middle. And then here, this uh, square here is the map there at the border from uplift to subsidence. Here we have a complete holding of the amount of uplift with the isobasis of 1.5 millimeter, one millimeter, half a millimeter, and zero. And this zero have remained stable for 8,000 years, my friend. <laughs> um, so uh, that makes some, that's an important thing. Uh, so then we have three tide gauges, Corsair, Nyborg, and Aarhus. And if I, I can give you the answer, here we can read it, and it's, it's 0.8 to 0.9 millimeter per year. So we look at them. And these are just taken from NOAA record. I have done nothing but just edit this text. So they say 0.1, and it's the zero. So why? The ocean component is 0.8. Nothing more, nothing less. And we go to uh, Nyboy, uh, and there it is one millimeter per year, and uh, as this 0.9 uh, in subsidence there, we have 0.9 millimeter in the eustatic factor. And if we go to Aarhus, this is the, what the tide gauge says, this is what the crustal, um, crustal uplift is, so we are the 0.9. So in this region, thank you, we have a eustatic absolute reading of 0.9 to 0.8. And I, mean, they're very, they's, I don't think there's only any other place in the world where you can do a trick like this. So now, summing it up, the global mean sea level, today, plus and minus 100 years. The record I showed you was 125 years before. Uh, this is a tight gauge, and I, global set. I think we have to lower that. This is the Kattegat, and there's a very many key sites. So we have to search for the global mean here somewhere, rather in the lower 0.0 to 1.0. It means 0.5 plus and minus 0.5. That is the best estimate of sea level rise today. 0.5 plus and minus 0.5. Friends, I give it to you. Uh, <laughs> and then we cross out as invalid satellite altimetry, and IPC. Why do we IPCC? Because they started with the answer. They started with it. It was not an analysis. And the satellite altimetry is biased by very strong subjective uh, corrections. If you ask me later, I have some hidden slides uh, which I can, sh can show you how they did that. Uh, so if you now take what I've just have told you, that was this blue box. Edit on the longer term, for uh, 300 years back in time and 100 years forward. We have ups, ups and downs, but, but, but no trend, no trend. <laughs> uh, and we have to be, this is the maximum. If you say that you are above that, you are, uh, lobbyist or an idiot. Just choose the them. <laughs> you don't know what you are talking about, and Wittgenstein should ask you to be silent. Uh, then I made a little law here. Why is this? 
because we know that we are now hit, um, going into a solar minimum. Solar minimum, in the previous solar minima, Spurer, Maunder, and Dalton minima, we had little ice ages. So accounting for that here, we may even go, go down. And therefore, I should say we should be here, IPCC up there, in the last and even continued higher up. Uh, next one is, so we are left with, now you understand what I mean. This is quite probable. This is maybe possible, but not, and this is certainly not likely about this. And here, you don't know what you are talking about. Uh, so we end by saying sea level by 2100 is estimated by, to be only five centimeter plus and minus 15 centimeter. So do we have to worry? Thank you. <laughs> so uh, what, just, just one more, a, a few selected references. If anyone wants it, I have it in a stick and it's also loaded up in the computer at the back, if you have a stick but not a computer. And uh, those who amuse it, I had this little pamphlet, The Greatest Lie Ever Told. It would be very nice if you buy it for me because this is how I make all my finances. Uh, I have a few copies with me. Uh, and that settled what I was supposed to, did I make it? Thank you, I made it. Thank you very much.